what we're looking at here is the Dingler King only really allows us to go hard into Sapphire. And his, his basic charge power is only a two cost. But what it says is um, transform two target non-Dingler troops you control into Dinglers. And then create a polymorph Dingler and put it into your hand. So the very first card we want to, we want to play with here is Polymorph Dingler because I know for a fact it has two equipment pieces. So let's build the Dingler King. Alright, and we're looking at probably a 22 shard deck. Maybe actually 23 because we have to put in 61 cards. Polymorph. Alright, so we got our Polymorph Dingler. We only can play three because it only allows us to play three sapphire things. Okay, so let me make sure I get the equipment in for this as well. Great. Now you'll see that there's also mass polymorph dingler has transform five random troops in each opposing champion's deck into dinglers. It's pretty good, but I think this is out of the range of what we actually want to play. It's it's like too slow. Um, and polymorphic army, we don't want to play that. So what we're gonna do here is um, we are going to add in a lot of things that either create troops or our troops himself. So, and, and that's not easy to do when you're only playing Sapphire. So one of the cards I want to immediately throw into the deck is Underworld Decree. Because Underworld Decree will allow us to... And we only can play one copy, but it allows us to create two Dreadlings. So we're, we're looking at Dreadling Tech to use our charge power. And I think that will help us get as many Dinglers into play as possible. So with that said, let's look at Dread as a keyword. And let's let's narrow down our list to only Sapphire for now. We might add in a few Ruby cards, even though we only can play one, just to have a quick kill if we hit the goal of um, the Dinglers, as you can see on the screen here. The Dinglers um, upgraded text says, exhaust 10 Dinglers you control, transform target opposing champion into a Dingler. So we want to we want to go for that ultimate goal of transforming the opposing champion into a Dingler. So that is the ultimate goal of the deck and in order to achieve that there's a lot of little things we're gonna have to do. One I think is focus on Dreadling Tech. So in order to focus on Dreadling Tech we're gonna add a Dread Launcher, we're gonna add three Dread Technomancers, three Cavern Sentries, and three upgrade technicians. Again, because we only can play three of any Sapphire card we want. I think we'll also add three battle agendas, just because it's a pretty decent card. Now let me see what equipment looks like for these cards. We, we might have, we don't really want the equipment for the artifacts since we only can play one of each, but maybe, no, nope, looks like all the, um, the Dreadling Tech Sapphire cards do not have equipment for them. What does this equipment do? Oh, two cost created Dreadling. He's just a little too expensive. Okay. So let's look at cards that maybe make Dinglers. I have a few other ideas of what I want to put in here. Okay, Entrance Settlement is interesting. I don't know why that popped up. Oh, the Dingle Wand. So, your Dingle Wiz has basic once per turn, pay X, create a random troop with cost X, and put it into your hand. So, that's pretty good because we don't have to associate any cost to this ability. So I think we're gonna definitely want three of those and we're gonna want to run the um, the weapon equipment. Oh, it's gloves equipment. Hmm. So there is one bad thing about the gloves equipment. I'll show you later because I had an idea about including Wizard of the Silver Talon. And Wizard of the Silver Talon has a um, equipment piece that says, when this enters play, create two Silver Talon sen senators and put Put them into play so he could immediately create two cards when he comes into play so I'm not sure which is better 
having this or having that. Um, I'm leaning more towards the wizard, but I'm not sure. Let, let's throw him in as well, and we'll think about it. Because if I play the wizard, I do not need to play Dingle Wiz. But if I play the Dingle Wiz, I probably should think about taking out Wizard of the Silver Talon. Okay, so there's one thing I did here with, with including the Dread Technomancer. Um, now I need to play some artifacts to kind of make him worth it. The other option is creating replicas, which are artifacts. So if I go the replica route, I can also play anything that makes replica copies, which a lot of cards in Sapphire do. So one of the next things I might look at is replicas. Um, So we might look at that also. Ancestors, Ancestors Chosen is interesting too, but I don't think we're gonna want that. Okay, so the other card I'm thinking of was, well, that I was thinking of was Holiday. But the, her good equipment is her headpiece. And um, yeah, because this is the one that allows you to get other Holidays from your deck or hand. Because we cannot use your headpiece, um, basically, because we want to make Polymorph Dingler as great as we can can make it. Um, so I don't think we're gonna. Yeah, here we go. Take care, my man. See you, man. So I don't think we're gonna use this headpiece. Um, but okay, so we're looking at artifact. We're looking at sapphire. I'm gonna keep looking at that. What are our other options to both play artifacts and multiple troops? That's what that's what we're going for now. Artifacts and multiple troops. Let me see. So Dingler King also says he is a Dingler King. He doesn't have any racer class. Um, that are associated to the, the main races and classes in the game. So uh, Heroic Echo is not going to work. This can be pretty hard, guys. I don't know. Again, what we're trying to do, if you're just tuning in, is figure out how are we going to get this Dingler's Gift of Unlimited Power to work. It says transform two target non-Dingler troops you control into Dinglers. Create a polymorphic dingler and put this into your hand. Um, so we have to have a bunch of non-dinglers to make it work. So we're going to have to constantly be putting new troops into play. So the best way I can think of doing that is, of course, um, with dreadlings. Um, the other option is battle hopper tech, but battle hopper tech puts us into wild, so then we'd only be able to play one of every Battle Hopper creation card. Um, so there, there is one other thing. Yes, the charge power does not revert. So if you change the opposing champion into a Dingler, he just becomes a 0-1 Dingler. I don't even know if he re retains a charge power. So when you do that, it's basically it's just a one-shot kill. My idea is because it's going to be so difficult to actually get um, one of us to go off, that this might even work for raid bosses. I think it. I think this particular upgrade text is going to be exceptionally powerful. But the problem is like, how do you make how do you make it go off? How do you actually make it happen? So that's what we're trying to do here. Um, the other tech I'm thinking about right now is all based around spiderlings. So what if I can get a ton of spiderlings? I think that could be another good strategy. We could even, um, we, we haven't utilized our trinket equipment yet either, so we can even look at warp steel widget tech. I think warp steel widget tech may actually be really good as well. So... Um, let me see here. We can play the Death Crawler. We can play the Warp Steel widgets. Um, oh no! 
Again, it's an artifact. So we only could play one Warp Steel widget, which we still might do. But we're not going to want to focus on it. Um, maybe we'll just throw one in here. Yeah, we're going to play Deathcrawler with Miner's Sapphire Dread for sure. Okay. Freaky Fungus. I think we I think we just play this guy just because he's so freaking good. And, and maybe we look into going Blood and Wild just to make him even better. We don't have a weapon equipment yet. Um, he's not going to be able to come back into play either. Hmm. This head equipment piece for Polymorph Dingler is very good, but it's also very limiting in terms of how you build the rest of your deck. So we'll leave Freaky Fungus in for now. Hmm. Chest equipment. Saga Troops got drawing at cost zero. That can be good. So I think we're going to include Lord Bernard. Maybe we include Cerulean Mirror Knight too to just get us more card draw. I don't know. Does it say revert and transform? Let's look at Dingler King again. It says transform two target troops. No, it doesn't revert. So any, any buffs they have will stay. Yeah, just for the card draw. Um... Actually, Freaky Fungus would be really good for the, the Shroomkin stuff. But again, it's like, you know, do I really want to splash um, a second color? You know, with, with this build so far, we already have quite a few cards. Um, I think some of them I may cut. Thinking about cutting the Wizard the Silver Talon. Freaky Fungus, I guess we can keep. All right, let's go a little deeper and see what else we could find. Warp Steel Widget, I think I might cut as well. Um, let's look at what this might look like with equipment. So we've got weapon there, potentially. Chest there. Um, we're not gonna waste our trinket slot yet. All right, so we got a trinket slot. So Tribunal Magistrate was the other card I was actually thinking about. Because that could create a bunch of spiders. And it's two spiderlings per per activation. So that could be pretty powerful. Um, Azura Fang Decree might also be good. I'm starting to think like spider tech for this deck could be pretty decent. So maybe that's the way we want to go. Because I... I'm not think I don't think there's Oh, yeah, the cloud the cloud walks with the cloud feather fan might be really good. Wait, if I do that, then I do have to look at flight troops. And I mean, what what are our options in flight? Let's let's look at flight briefly. I don't think we're going to have great options with flight. Sky Mage could create actions for us. Um, again, we want to keep it fairly cheap so we can get these things into play quickly. Phoenix Guard Messenger could be pretty good, um, especially if we make it one cost. Ooh, Storm Cloud is an option. I didn't think of Storm Cloud initially. But if we can make a bunch of Stormlings and use those to, to turn into um, Dinglers, that could be really good. Stormcloud actually also has fairly good trinket equipment. That might be a thing. So let's throw in three Stormclouds. Um, yeah, Stormcloud actually is really good. Stormcloud makes me think of immediately playing the... Um, what's it called? Oh man, I'm completely blanking on it. The Cloud Queens, but I, I want to make the deck relatively affordable. See, that what we're doing now is we're kind of stretching thin, because we're, we're looking at... There's a lot of different strategies that are being implemented right now with this deck. Like, 
we have Shroomkin tech, and we have Spiderling tech, and we have Dreadling tech, and now we have Charge tech. So that, that might be too many different elements conflicting right now. What we definitely want are more more troop creation effects. Um, Dreadling tech being the most um, direct way to get troops into play. And the only other thing we, we might want to pair a little bit more with this deck is reducing the cost of, of things. So maybe playing mind call? I don't know. Maybe mind call. My wife just... Yeah, sorry, my, my wife was telling me how much the girls ate. I guess they had good appetites tonight, which is good. All right. So I think maybe we're gonna take out some of this tech here. I think wind up widget's probably too narrow um, to even attempt playing. Um, I don't know. It's good. We're going to leave it out of the deck right now. Shiitake Chef also probably a little too narrow. What I want to do is make sure that we're focusing on a single strategy. And I think Dreadlings with either Spiderlings or something else along those lines is going to be the best for us. Um, and then I think the cost reduction has to be a focus as well. So... Maybe we're going to do the mine calls. I think mine call might be a good addition here. But I feel, I feel like I'm missing something. I feel like I'm really missing something here. Well, let's look at the dingler a little bit more here. So what else does he do for us? He's going to allow us to exhaust four dinglers we control create an embrace of the dinglers and put it into play. Okay, so let's take a guess at what embrace the, the dinglers is. My personal guess, embrace the dinglers is going to be like Wretched Brood, where at the start of our turn, it's gonna put another dingler into play. That's my guess on what embrace the dinglers is. I don't think anyone has shared what it actually does, but that's my guess. Because that's one of the only ways I can think of actually getting eventually to 10 Dinglers without completely compromising your deck. So that's my guess. Embrace and Dinglers is a constant that creates a Dingler for you at the beginning of your turn and puts it into play. Or potentially allows you to take control of all dinglers on the opposite side of the play. That could be actually really cool. Like embrace the dinglers when it comes into play, it takes control of all dinglers on the opposite side of the play. That would be pretty neat. Yeah, Skizugi would would probably not affect any newly created cards. Kind of like newly created valors are not affected by by things. So I don't think Skizuki is going to work for us, but the equipment for Polymorph Dingler will still work for the newly created ones because we that equipment is for our champion. I don't think it's tied to the card itself. And maybe I'm not right about that. Let me see here. Yeah, it's a, it just says your Polymorph Dinglers have. So... It should apply, because our champion's wearing it, it should apply to any Polymorph Dingler we have. The The reason I'm a little hesitant to say that's 100% true, though, is because if an opposing champion takes control, or the AI takes control of one of your cards that you had equipment for, I think it would will still work for that opposing champion. Um, I could be a little fuzzy on that. Maybe that's not true anymore. But I, I could have sworn I've done an arena run where the champion took one of my 
um, buffed up troops and, and was able to use that buff for himself. So, I'm not 100% sure on that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I know I've created, like, Dream Eagles with Mimeo bots, and I was still able to use a discard effect on the robot copies. So I'm pretty sure it works, too. But I just didn't... I don't want to, like... 100% say it is certain. So I got this deck here. We've got, let me see what our curve looks like, cost. It's gonna show Dingler King as five even though it's really in the three slot. We have the Dread Technomasters that we still need to be mindful of. We, we're gonna want the artifacts in our deck if we actually play them. But they, they do trigger Dreadlings off the ca Cavern Sentries. Let's say when an Underworld Troop enters play under our control create a dreadling and put it into play. Um, do we want to play more artifacts? Here we have the widget in, let's put it back. Hmm. We could do some sort of bounce, bounce tech in this deck because bouncing with this particular deck will allow us to replay things that are creating dreadlings. So if we bounced a upgrade technician, for example, replaying him would create another two dreadlings and put them into play. That seems really good for this particular card because he also could have the, um, the dreadling sockets. All right, hon. One of the things I'm looking at now too is if we play both Depth Crawler and Upgrade Technician, we have to mi mix up our um, we have to mix up our gems for the sockets. I think Upgrade Technician is really good, and I think I want to say that we should probably play the redu the cards that reduce other cards' cost. Um, I could also go for a mirror mirror strategy. Mirror mirror strategy might be good too. Let's take a quick look at mirror mirror. Mirror mirror is super good. It has glove equipment too that says when this enters play, you may destroy a target troop with the same name as this. Um, don't think we'd want to use it, but it is a six cost. It will create two target troops and put them into play. Maybe it's a little too slow. Maybe that's just a little too slow. This is hard, guys. I thought it'd be easier for me to find a bunch of cheap stuff that will allow me to get troops into play. And it's turning out to be harder than I thought it would be. Equal Clot Orb is actually really good, too, to have a one of in because this can also create dreadlings for cheap. So maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll just make sure we get the dreadling tech here. So I think definitely death crawler is going to be worth it. Now it's just really, yeah, the shard grid totally hurts. Now it's just finding out other ways to get troops into play quickly. So right now, let's see, our turn ones, we have the Tread Technomancers and we have the Depth Crawlers. And then we have um, a bunch of cheap artifacts. We have the Underworld Decree, the Warp Steel Widget, the Equal Claw Orb. We have the Free Spectral Acorn. We don't have any two drops, so maybe that's what we need to look for now is what do we want in the two slot? We have a bunch of three drops and we currently have a bunch of four drops, but I'm not sure about the upgrade technician anymore. It, it will create two dreadlings. However, yeah, it's just, it's kind of not doing anything else for us. Maybe that storm cloud tech is the way we gotta go. In fact, in fact, 
I don't know. Maybe we keep this in, but I just got an idea. Mentioning Stormcloud again. I got an idea because... Oh, it's feet equipment. Darn it. So my idea was to include the Tide cards in here. Or the Crackling cards, I mean. Crack. Because we can play Crackling Wits, we can play three, we can play three Crackling Tides, and we can play four Crackling Vortex, which suddenly pushes this deck into expensive uh, zone. And I, I kind of don't want to do that, just because this is, um, at least initially, supposed to be a fully equipped deck. So for those of you that have Vortex, throw them in if you, if you do. Um, if you don't, don't worry about it. I think it'll be fine. Because the Dingler's charge power is only two. So if you, but what we're, we're trying to do is make Stormcloud even stronger. That's, that's the attempt here. Okay. Now we know Stormcloud has to be sacrificed to make Stormlings. Yeah, we know it has to be sacrificed to make Stormlings, and when he is sacrificed, he's going to lose all of those charges. So, what else do we need to include here to make that more powerful? Now, we can play the Crackling Wits... Um, Trinket equipment. That's potential. There's a lot of different things we can do with this particular build idea. A lot of different things. Um, I kind of like the direction we're going, but part of me is also like, uh, should we be splashing another color? Like, maybe that will help us? I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. With only six crackling cards, I'm, I'm not sold on using the equipment for it. I probably would rather have the equipment on the Stormcloud, which means we can more safely get away with Pumping him up even higher. And maybe our last two cards then, because we're, we're doing this theme, maybe the last two cards are just one of artifacts. That way there we can get the, um, the charge bot, which is also a cheap troop. And it gives us a charge. And then um, maybe we can do... Maybe we can do a Charge Hulk. Yeah, the Charge Hulk would work. Yep, exactly. Splashing anything just will mean one of. Maybe Charge Hulk is the best one to do. I don't know. What do you guys think of this? Would this be good or would it be better to Maybe drop the battle agendas, drop the upgrade technicians, and add in some more two drops. Like maybe put Freaky Fungus back in the deck, utilize his weapon equipment, um, maybe splash some wild stuff. Because wild, wild has access to more dreadling tech, they have access to battle hoppers. So if we splashed wild, we might be able to get away with more pump. They also have access to um, two more crackling cards we could splash in as well. Maybe making it worth it to play the equipment on crackling wit. That's another option. Because I, I think out of all the cards in the deck right now that I'm a little not convinced of is really the battle agenda and the upgrade technician. However, Battle Agenda and Upgrade Technician are basically what are going to allow us to play the Cavern Sentry. Because as soon as we take out Upgrade Technician, 
this card becomes less relevant because we're only playing 12. Um, we're only playing 12 Underworld Allegiance Troops. Which could arguably be another issue with the deck. Um, the other way we can go is Tribunal Magistrate and maybe even Nazak, uh, Nazak Lookout and do some sort of Dingler slash Mill strategy. Because we can then use our Spiderlings to um, tr change them into Dinglers. And um, our Dreadlings are also Spiderlings as well. Um, so this would go a little bit better, I think, with the Cavern Sentry. Maybe we focus on that. Tribunal Magistrate, Nazak Lookout. Um, and then we can take out Dread Technomancer and the artifacts, because these artifacts are very rarely going to ever hit. Um, we could leave in the Spectral Acorns, and we could leave in the Eagle Claw Orb, and maybe even the Underworld Decree. But I wonder what that would look like. So we're going to put in three Lookouts. We're going to put in three Tribunal Magistrate. Which hopefully are cheap right now, by the way. If you if you don't have a place at a tribunal magistrate and you're listening right now, you should probably go buy one. Um, and if they're not super cheap, like try to trade for them, because I think they're going to be really popular with the next set. In fact, if any relevant mill cards come out in the next two sets for PvP, tribunal magistrate might make another appearance as a solid PvP deck. I might not finish this deck in time. I'm going to get aggro before the deck is done. Alright, so we're looking at Tribunal Magistrate, which is this guy, so three. Alright, let's see what that does if we... This also gives us access to new equipment, so... It might be better in that regard as well. Thinking about taking out this guy, yeah. Tinkle is is not Underworld. Battle Agenda, I think we want out. Dread Technomancer, I think we want out. Okay, that's 51 cards. I took out Stormcloud already. We could use the Trinket Equipment on Nozak Lookout. Trinket. All right, we're gonna take out the Crackle Tech. Okay, now we're gonna look at Spiderlings. What is this? Of course it's a Trinket, right? Yes, 61 cards, thank you, thank you. I cannot forget that. So Hatchery Malvoker could be pretty good. In fact, Brood Bounty might even be really good for this deck. Those two cards could actually be super good together. We can utilize the glove equipment. We can completely take out Dinglewiz, which is expensive anyway. And he's not Underworld Allegiance. So all of a sudden, this is turning into a spider deck. Totally turning into a Venom deck. When a spider or Venom enters play under your control, you may draw a card. Spider or Venom? That's pretty insane for the head equipment, but because of how expensive he is, we're, we're probably not going to get away with that. So. Let's see a shield. Is this glove? Yeah, it is glove. Well, the cool thing is too with the spiraling tech is you know you can you can attack with your spiralings, get the damage in, and then turn them into dinglers. Same with the dreadlings as well. I am 
trying to operate under budget restrictions, which means I'm not going to be able to put in too many more rares because I already have a Treadmine Magistrate in, in the deck. Um, right now, Skizagi seems like something I want to play. Seems like I want to get some... Because of Hatchery Malvoker now, I'm, I'm really wanting to put in actions. So, let's look at actions. Of course, now, you know, Chronic Madness makes sense. Because we, we can mill. mill. Mill seems to be pretty good. Crowding Madness is definitely out of budget range, though, as most people know that have tried to build Chronic Madness deck. We've got the Brute Bounty for Recursion. That's also kind of why I want to have a few Skizigis in the deck. Maybe we'll just do, we'll do like two Skizigi, because they're, they're super cheap still, I think. I think we could do Mind Call also. In fact, we can do Mind Call instead than Skizigi, and I think it's better in this case because we can use it on our um, like our Tribunal Magistrate to have like a turn two Tribunal. Yeah, Murmurs is cheap. Um, Morphology is an option too for for added card draw. And let me see here. So now we have 15 troops that are under World Allegiance. That's a lot better. We could add in more. Lunacy is an option as well. We still have a chest equipment slot. pretty tough. I'm having a tough time creating this. So we're, we're lacking card draw and we need more actions. Yeah, Dread, Dread Launcher is probably too slow. We already have the Eagle Clot Orb. Gotta remember that the, the all the artifacts are going to be are going to be slow. And also, Dread Launcher only provides us with one Dreadling, so it's not going to allow us to activate our charge power by itself. Yeah, it's hard to go wrong with Lanapoth's Sight, I guess, especially if you're playing, um, especially if you're playing the Mind Calls, because you can do it on turn two. Um, I'll probably definitely put in one of those two cost artifacts that are coming out with the next set too, once I have one. So let's do line of site. Um, okay, so we've got that. All right, so we have five slots left in the deck because we have to have 64 cards. We're at 12, 15 actions, we're at 15 troops, That's and three artifacts. We have, we have a good mix right there, 15 actions, 15 troops. We probably want to make use of our weapon and chest equipment slots, so let's look now at what we could potentially put in the deck from Sapphire that is either a chest or a weapon slot. So Mirrors of the Void is one, it buries eight cards. It is a little bit expensive, but if we're playing Mind Call, it might be really good to use. So maybe we go with Murmurs as removal. 
I don't know what's happening to my daughter outside. It sounds like she's thrown. One second. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. Sorry, we're both kind of being uh, avoiding parents' duty right now. Um, my wife and I are both in other rooms from our kids, so if I hear anything crazy, I gotta go run and check. Okay, so rumors from the boy void is an option. We might we might actually consider that because it is quasi removal. Um, Mirror mage, Mirror mage is interesting. I don't think we have enough damage to make Mirror Mage worth it. Is there a way we can get... Is there a way we can get... Um, a lot of card draw outside of Lan... I guess Lanapaz is going to have to be enough. Do we want La Lady Devonshire in here to copy abilities? Lady Devonshire would be pretty cool in this deck. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to run her equipment, but I think she'd be pretty good. There is the Angel of Foresight, but now I'm looking at cards that are a little bit out of cost range. So, got to keep that in mind. Ooh, Piranhas. The Piranhas, that is a good option. Unfortunately, the feed equipment for Piranhas is the better piece. But I, I do like the prospect of Piranhas, so I'm gonna throw that weapon slot there. What happened? Uh-oh. What happened here? I lost. The ability to look at all the equipment. What did I do? That turned off everything. Oh, is it because I'm clicked on this? Huh, that's bizarre. Really? Oh, there we go. Maybe it's just bugging out or something. There's also Chaotic Ripped. Or chaotic rip. Oh, there's also mind collar too. That's a pretty good one because it can reduce the cost of anything in our hand by two. I do like that one. It's probably not right for this deck though. There's also Thunderbird that gives charges, but we've moved away from the the um, Stormcloud strategy. Okay, I think it's, I think it is definitely going to be uh, Murmurs. Thunderfield Seer is an option too. We could do Slight Prophecy tech with this deck. And we forgot about Freaky Fungus. Freaky Fungus is still an option. The only thing I don't like about Freaky Fungus is we're not playing in a way that's going to allow us to enable his recur recursive abilities to create a bunch of shroom pins. If we utilized him for his recursive abilities and to create shroom pins, then he would be the perfect card to play in this deck. But if we go that route, we're not looking at Spiderling tech. We're looking at Dreadling tech with uh, shroom pin tech. So... I think we're leaning away from that right now, which is fine. I, I don't think the deck needs that to work. So yeah, I guess it's going to be good old murmurs. We're going to do the good old murmurs. And because we're doing murmurs, because we're doing 
Dingler deck, I might have to cut some cards. So what do I cut? Oh, that's going to be a tough one. What do I cut? And, and if I cut a troop, am I okay? Because I, I might need to add in other troops. And is Piranha the right card to play? So the, the other thing I'm thinking of is if we do not do Piranhas, which I do think Piranhas are actually quite good. Um, and Piranhas are quick, by the way. I don't think a lot of people know that or have played around enough to know that, but Piranhas are quick, which um, is pretty awesome. So let's, let's throw in those cards and just see what we're working with here. So we're going to have three piranhas with their weapon equipment. We're going to have three murmurs. So we're currently at 62 cards. Ideally, we'll drop something though. I think we're going to get white factor in a second here, and that'll be fun. Maybe I just drop like a single mind call, because mind call by itself is not amazing. But it, it, with all the pieces of this deck, it could become quite good. Oh, the other thing is Lady Devonshire. Let's look at Lady Devonshire. Because right now we don't have a lot of troops in the deck, if you think about it. It's pretty true play. Start your turn, put a random action in your crypt into your deck. All your cards and play with the same name in all zones get when you play this, copy it. So the the all cards in all zones thing getting copy is pretty huge. Um, the downside is that Lady Devonshire is not Underworld. So we're still looking at only 15 troops currently in the deck that are underworld based, which is really only important for the Cavern Sentry. I mean, unfortunately, Cavern Sentry is the next card we consider cutting because playing a single, playing a single underworld troop in a turn is not going to make us really want to utilize our charge power because. Um, it's only going to be turning one Dreadling into a Dingler, and then we'll have to target one of our actual troops. So it could be a major downside. We're banking on the fact that we think Embrace the Dinglers is going to be pretty good. Um, I don't know. I feel like Lady Devonshire as a 3 of would be very good in this deck, even though she is a... I guess she would be considered a non-budget option. Hmm. I think we just cut a mind call and call it a day. That would be my my call here. And I guess the, the only final thing we'd have to ask ourselves is, does this deck have enough mill to make the Venom strategy worth it? With Murmurs and with Azura Fang Decree, that's pretty good, but it, it is expensive mill. It's not very cheap mill. Um, Lunacy would be the cheapest budget mill that we could include. And I don't know. I think this could work. So we're going to go ahead and go with it. Um, I could maybe cut a Brood Bounty. I'll just cut one brood bounty. I don't know. Ah, uh, no, I'm not gonna do that. I, that seems silly. Huh? Why am I having such a hard time cutting a card? Maybe we just cut spectral acorn because it's not really gonna do anything. It has no synergy with the deck. So we're gonna cut our acorn and call it a day. So 23 shards, 48 
wait, no, 38 playable cards. Um, let's see, which guy looks like the dingler the most out of all these champions? I guess we might as well make him um, Sapphire based. Here, we'll call Blue Sparrow the Dingler. How about that? Okay, so this will be the Dingler King deck. We'll just resort right now by cost. There we go. Um, I'll sort one more time by cost to see the highest first. So we've got three cost Polymorph Dingler, even though it's showing as five. Got three, five cost Murmurs, four cost Piranhas at Quick. Three cost caverns, three cost tribunals, three cost land pod, three cost Azura thing. And then we got a pretty nice amount of two drops and one drops. Quite a lot of one drops actually. I think that looks pretty good. Um, mind call, the primary targets for mind call will either be to get in a very early tribunal magistrate or an early land pod site. Um, and then potentially uh, reduce the cost of murmur so we can actually play it. Reduce the cost of brood bounty so we can continually replay it for free. Or reduce the cost of um, maybe a Piranha Swarm to get it in a little bit faster. We're only going to want to play the Piranha Swarm um, in response to an attack so that we have a, a cheap blocker. And it's going to create six Piranhas. So that, that's actually going to be pretty huge. Um, it's unfortunate that we cannot play the feed equipment for it, but we really want to make as great of use of the Polymorph Dingler as possible because we're going to be getting free Polymorph Dinglers every time we turn two of our troops into Dinglers, and then we can um, play another Polymorph Dingler to, to blank out one of their troops. So I think a Polymorph Dingler strategy is the, really, the best way to go for this deck. Um, we're also going to get free um, Venom cards put into play occasionally by Nozak Lookout's uh, Trinket Equipment. So that's going to be pretty cool. And then we have the Glove Equipment on um, the Hatchery Malvoker that is, instead of putting um, three Spiralings in the deck every time we play an action, it's going to put four in. So we're going to get some nice value out of that as well. So I think this is, this is what we're going to go with. And um, 